RNAV GPS approaches with vertical guidance offer significant safety improvements for small airports that were traditionally served by non-precision VOR or end to view approaches. I'm Virgil from Plane Places and Adventures. I recently started flying again after many years inactive and took an instrument proficiency check to re-establish currency. During that check, one thing really stuck out. One thing that really stuck out was a key difference in when vertical guidance is provided depending on how the approach is loaded and activated. In this video I'm using the Garmin GTN XI 750 simulator and A2A Comanche aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. These are very similar to my real 1959 Comanche and Garmin GTN 650. The approach of interest is the RNAV 18 to 5 Romeo 4 Foley Alabama. This approach actually has a few nuances of its own which I'll discuss in a bit. Well, let's just start by flying the full approach with course reversal starting from Rupke. Here we are turning on to the inbound course after a parallel entry. And you can see already the Garmin is uh, plotting a three degree top of descent uh, a few miles past the intersection. Vertical track. You can note that the vertical guidance, if you look at the HSI, is flagged. So again, uh, the GPS is still in terminal mode. It hasn't entered approach mode in LPV. So we're not getting any vertical guidance. One of the nuances of this approach is uh, although Rupke is the IF, it's, uh, there's an intermediate waypoint between the IF and the final approach fix. So in this case, we've passed Rupke, and now Hapen is the active waypoint, but you can see our vertical guidance is still flagged. You'll also notice at this point I've already cut the power and put the gear down and I'm descending to 2600 which is the step down altitude for this segment. Why that's important will become apparent here when we actually cross the waypoint. We expect as we cross Hapen, we'll start to get vertical guidance and the GPS should go into LPV mode because we're now in the final segment before the FAFs. And there it is, our flag is gone and notice where the vertical CDI is and this is where you could be very easily caught off guard if you hadn't studied this approach a little bit or flown it before. We've just crossed uh, what would on the approach plate look to be a another just sort of ordinary step down to intercept but we're actually right on the three degree glide slope already. So if we really hadn't been aware of that ahead of time or been prepared we might have been in a fairly nasty surprise and misconfigured to start this approach in a stabilized way. So let's step back a little bit and go to the approach plates. And I'm going to start with an RNAV approach at a nearby airport, uh, Sunny Callahan, Fairhope, Alabama, the RNAV 18. Because this is what I consider a little bit more of a traditional approach. So I'm zoomed in here on my iPad uh, to the plan view and we see there's a final approach fix with crossing at 1,500 feet. And that in this, that segment prior, uh, we're losing 500 feet and six nautical miles. This is a standard three degree slope. So again, if we uh, do basic rounding, 300 feet, 
it's really of course a little more per nautical mile 600 or actually only 500 feet to lose in that final segment that's 500 feet over six miles so we would expect we need a little less than two miles to actually lose that altitude not very uh, much in the grand scheme of things and again the type of approach that lends itself to staying at 2,000 feet until intercepting and then writing it down now let's go ahead and switch over instead to that Foley approach again let's zoom in now again our final approach fix we have a crossing at intercept point at 1700 feet but our minimum altitude on our prior segment is 2600 feet so that's 900 feet of difference over three nautical miles which really means that Hapen is just about on the glide slope so again, if we just taken a, a quick glance, because these views aren't to scale, um, we might miss that that final segment here is quite a bit steeper, although definitely still within uh, allowances, than a lot of other approaches. So something I like to do is, you know, in Garmin Pilot, your other apps, you can even annotate on the charts. So, you know, one of the things you could do is even just mark your charts for that crossing point ahead of time. Here we've reset, and now we've loaded the approach and vectors the final mode. We're still outside the Rupke initial fix, but you can see looking at the HSI, the vertical CDI I is already unflagged and the GPS is already in LPV approach mode, meaning vertical guidance is active. Now again, this doesn't mean you can violate any of the step down fix crossing requirements or ATC instructions in terms of altitude requirements uh, before getting established on the approach, but it does mean even as we're coming up on this waypoint much further out, we're starting to get that vertical guidance and realization that the glide slope is actually coming on here pretty soon and pretty far out compared to many other approaches. So remember when we had the full approach loaded we didn't get vertical guidance until Hapen intersection and when we did we discovered that Hapen's 2,600 foot crossing altitude is essentially right on the three degree final glide slope. Now we're seeing that more clearly here as we've just really passed the IF and we already see the glide slope coming down as we intercept it um, at that original altitude of 3,100 feet. We're not far past the initial fix when we could start down and ride that glide slope. Now again, we still need to confirm we're crossing Hapen at or above 2,600, but um, the way most of these approaches are designed, again, not all, but most, that generally speaking will be the case. And that's it. So lesson for today and to remember is when you have vectors to final activated on an LPV approach, you'll be getting vertical guidance independent of where you are in the actual approach sequence. If you've loaded the full approach, you'll only start to get vertical guidance once you're in the final segment before the final approach fix. Also underscoring the importance to not assume that that final segment's going to give you comfortable room to decelerate and get down and intercept the glide slope from below. So always a good idea to look at that profile view of every approach and mark uh, assuming the the given glide slope where in that final segment would you intercept if you held altitude the prior crossing altitude and that can save uh, some nasty surprises and help lead to better more stabilized approaches once again hope you found this interesting feel free to drop your own uh, Garmin or IFR RNAV approach tips and please like and subscribe.